Welcome again to Vine Talks. Be fruitful, Ronnie is my name, and I'm your usual host. Absolutely excited uh, to bring you yet another inspirational story of another trailblazer who I think is uh, making it big out there or destined for bigger things. Uh, it's amazing, you know, it's the Women's Month. Uh, we just celebrated Women's Day not too long ago. And this particular lady reached out to me and said, hey, how come you guys at Vine Talks never host ladies? And I was like, wait a minute, is that true? Uh, not entirely, but I suddenly decided then to reach out to her and say, you are the lady we have just been looking for. I'm sure she has an inspirational story that's going to change your life. Uh, so get your pens, notebooks, papers ready. Call your papa, your mama, your friends, everyone, and be sure to share this link on all of your socials when it comes out. But remember, we're shooting live from Kampala Serena, and uh, shouts out to them. They are our sponsors here. Take some time to come out to Kampala Serena with the family with the wife, with the kids, uh, join the Maisha Spa, bring them swimming, uh, bring them for a nice candlelit dinner, whatever you want to do as far as luxury dining is concerned. Kampala Serena is the place to be. We'll be right back and uh, when we return I get to introduce my wonderful guest today. Welcome back to Vine Talks. Again, Ronnie is my name, and like I promised, I have a wonderful lady on the set with me today. Her name is Fiona. Fiona Nuamanya Ahimbisiwe. And uh, Fiona, I was honored to be her wedding MC not too long ago. How long have you been married now? <laughs> One year and two months. One year and two months. So clearly marriage is not what we're going to be talking about uh, because uh, in terms of experience, we lack at that one in this particular area. <laughs> Zero. But we're going to get to know a little bit about Fiona, her story, and trust me, uh, you're going to be absolutely grateful you, you know, I hosted her and you listened to this show. It will be worth your while. So we're going to take it from the top. Uh, as usual, I like to start with who is Fiona? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Wow. Thank you, Roni. Uh, my Ugandan, born uh, here. All right. Um, I wouldn't have known. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> born and, and raised in Uganda. Um, I am an accountant by profession, right. though not really by occupation. Not anymore, at least. Uh, hmm, some days, yes, some days, but mostly not. Yeah. Um, I have. I, I'm married to one husband. Uh, no children yet. Um, I have four siblings. I'm the first of the girls. Uh, yeah, middle child. Middle child. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. If you are an animal and. Uh, <laughs> I want you to answer this with, think it through. Yeah, if you're an animal, what animal would you be and why? I'd be a giraffe. Okay. Uh, because um, it's tall, it's graceful. Um, things that I may or may not be. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, I think it has a very good view of uh, its surroundings, which is something that I, I think I really crave. Yeah. Yes. All right. So you have that bird's eye view or yes. giraffe's view. Uh, yes. You like to go for things at the top. Uh -huh. Big things. Yes. And, hmm, awesome. <laughs> awesome. So Fiona, as you're going to get to know a little later, is uh, a budding entrepreneur, if you like, uh, businesswoman. And, you know, sometimes we, we, we host people who have uh, achieved, people who are at the end of the story, so to speak. And you're like, wow, they've done all these big things and all of that. But every once in a while, it's good to get someone who you can see see is certainly on the way, on the way uh, yeah. to big things, yeah. who has already had some wins here and there. And if you extrapolate, if they continue the way they are going, you can tell uh, big things are going, like they say. All right. Uh, I know Fiona is a part of, are you one of the directors? Is that what you call yourself? Um, yes. Uh, uh, director in charge of finance and administration. All right. So Rocket, Rocket Health. Health. Yeah. Uh, she's one of the partners, directors at Rocket Health. And uh, first of all, from the onset, I want to say congratulations. Thank you. I just read Thank not you. too long ago, you guys just won a, is it a grant? of five million dollars yeah we raised uh wow. five million dollars from an equity investor do you want to tell us just a little bit about that before we get into the meat of the story yes so um when the pandemic came yeah. um 
uh, there was so much uh, traffic uh, mm -hmm. for the services and people really appreciated what uh, this service has always been about. And we wanted to bring that service to very many more people. Yeah. And uh, we went out to look for a partner who could uh, finance the expansion plans that the company has to yeah. bring this service closer to people even outside Kampala. And so I see you're now going to be hitting East Africa, Kenya, Rwanda. I don't know. Everywhere. Name the it. Dreams are big. Yes. Wow. Uh, and so Fiona is indeed a part of Rocket Health, and we're going to get a little bit into that story, you know. Um, I'm sure you and me both, or uh, at least wherever you are listening, you've probably heard about Rocket Health, hopefully use some of their services, uh, or maybe this is going to open your eyes to them and you're going to be using the services as well, okay? Uh, but before we get into the Rocket Health story, because it's not really about Rocket Health as much as it is about Fiona as an individual. So I want to take the story back to you, uh, high school, I don't know what school you went to, and then you go to university, and you are following the same line everyone else is supposed to be following. Go to a specific school, get your degree, then this, then get a good job, and continue with life as it should be. What was your journey like? Okay, um, I went to Navisinsa Girls School, mm -hmm. uh, all level, A level. Uh, finished that, uh, I did sciences, and then I went to Macquarie University mm -hmm. uh, to pursue a bachelor's in business statistics. Okay. Um, at the time, I knew I wanted to go into accounting, but I didn't want to do the BBA course. Okay. Um, uh, this particular course was new at Macquarie, and I thought I would just uh, try it, and then later see how I see end how up into the accounting, mm -hmm. into accounting world. Yeah, so I went and did that, and uh, straight out of the university, I started uh, my ACCA, and then I joined uh, Ernst & Young uh, Global Audit Firm. All right, and an at that point you were doing well. Uh, hey, I was fresh out of campus, hey, yeah. straight into <laughs> Young. I mean, I was lucky to get yeah employment before even I graduated, and wow. and yeah, I was glad because at that Those time. Those guys head hunt, right? They go uh, with the arms for cream, they love cream, and um, yes, yes, yes they, 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 <laughs> humidity. Uh, it's, it's all right. All right. <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, so they came to the university. I had actually never heard of um, you know the likes of uh, PwC, yeah. Deloitte. So in our third year, they came to the university university and did like um, a presentation on mm -hmm. uh, what the careers are, are like uh, what there, what opportunities there. there are. And I got interested and I was like, wow, this is, you know, this is the place for me. Mm -hmm. So I applied to <laughs> three of the of the firms yeah. and uh, I got selected uh, in Anderson Young. And All right. So there you are, fresh out of campus, Anderson Young, doing very well, uh, Accounting, My, your I, dream I, job. I, yeah, I, I, because I was so passionate about accounting, I was like, this is it. I've the rest arrived. of my life, I've arrived. Mm -hmm. I was excited about my career. I was excited about my prospects. And I could, like, I could see where I was going. Yeah. Yeah. And as you shared with me earlier, your father um, had always had a, it's like he had your life planned out. He had a dream for you uh, as his first daughter. You know how it daughter. is, first daughters uh -huh. and fathers. <laughs> so he has all these dreams for you and, and, and you're basically you're checking the boxes. Yeah, uh, I, was, uh, I was ticking the boxes. Checking the Government boxes. sponsorship, mm -hmm. best girl school. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, you know, and Stanley. Nabisusa is the best girl school. That one we shall question another time. <laughs> but anyway, uh-huh. And you're probably, yes. what, 20, what, 4, 5? Yeah, I was 24, 25. Yeah. About, yeah. All right. And so your dad is happy with the progress. Yes. He's, mm -hmm. really, uh, he's excited. Yeah. yeah. Very but very proud, first. you know, he would introduce me and say, this is my daughter, my daughter. first daughter. She's mm -hmm. working for Ernst & Young. She's yeah. an auditor. Uh -huh. She's finished her SSEA. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's now working on an MBA in this or whatever. Yes, uh, yes. But for some reason, you are not happy. Uh, not that I wasn't happy, but I had... After some time in, you know, in the corporate world, I was like, okay, so is this it? Like, so we work and pay bills for the rest of our lives? Mm -hmm. Like, this is it? So the first year, you're like, hey, hey first year, second yes, year. Second year. Yeah. Like, every year you're waiting for salary increase, you, you spend the money, mm -hmm. next year, like... You I'm like, okay, raise, so is this like, it? 30, mm -hmm. 40, 50, like, this is the rest of my life? And then I started having questions. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you start to yeah. yearn for more. A question which yeah. many entrepreneurs or people who have gone on to do big things do. Right. There must be more than this. Yes. I, I kept telling myself that there must be, like, there must be more. So even if I, I work really hard and go up this ladder at Anson Young and become then a partner, what? then what? So I, I, I found myself in that place, in that season where I was consistently asking myself whether this was it for me. Yeah. Yes. 
So what, what exactly were you then hungering for? If, if not a great job, great salary, uh, I mean, you are acing all your appraisals or, or whatever. <laughs> What what was the hunger? What were you, what is the more you were looking? At? I don't know. You can I don't know if someone can ever really describe what that feeling is. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think when I hear people talking about purpose, I think that's what it was. I was really searching for my purpose in yeah. life, uh, and and people say purpose is that sweet spot uh, between uh, liking loving what you do, mm -hmm. uh, making money mm -hmm. with it. Um, being able to be to serve the, the world, the hedgehog. yes, to and being good at it. Yeah. So um, I, I felt like I was I was missing something. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was good at my so job. You, I, it was paying you. It was paying me, but some of the boxes were not, were not ticked. ticked. Yes. Mm. Yeah. All right. So then, what 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 then do you decide to do? So um, on this quest for <laughs> purpose. Yes, mm. on my quest for purpose. So I left uh, Anst and Young and decided. Uh, I was doing audits, so yeah. I decided to go into finance operations uh, because I thought maybe I needed to, to do something different. Mm -hmm. um, find that purpose. Yeah. Find that, uh, the answer to that question that I had. So I, I went to another company. I joined a company called Medical Access Uganda Limited, okay. uh, where I joined as a senior accountant. And then uh, I worked there and uh, grew uh, through the ranks to finance controller. But still, the question remained. And, and, and I kept asking myself, okay, so I thought if I go there into a different, yeah, this. like there must be more. Okay, I was earning really well. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it was it not really about, about the, money. the money. No, it wasn't even about the money. Well, it says really well, she was earning really well. Uh, well, we'll spare you the details, but yes. Yeah, so it wasn't about the money. It was about finding the answer to those questions that used to keep me awake at night. Yeah. And... Um, as fate would have it, I, I read this book called Lean In by mm -hmm. Cheryl uh, Sanderberg. I, I landed on it. Um, you can a friend. the copy. Feel free to put it out from wherever you did. Uh, we'll, we'll get it and share <laughs> yeah. it later. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would really recommend it for ladies out there to look for it. And, and it talks about the will to, to work and to lead. Yeah, yeah. What's the title again? Lean In, Lean in. by oh. Cheryl uh, Sandberg. All She's right. the CEO of Facebook. So um, in, in this book, she describes how she had grown, uh, gone up the corporate ladder and, and how, uh, she, how women can be able to get uh, everything uh, that they want out of. It's not either you have to be a mother or you have to be a wife or you have to be you know, great at career. You can have it all. You can actually have it all. Yeah. And, and she, in reading that book, there were so many questions within me that were that, that hung, yes, that was stirred up. That hunger just came alive, and I knew that, you know, if you want to, if you want to answer this question, you need to make some bold moves. You need to step up. Yes. And in the book, she's really talking about climbing the corporate ladder. Yes. But you are inspired in a different way. To yes. Say, right? Actually, in essence, she's talking about how she, yes, how she climbed the corporate ladder, and um, but for me, it 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 stirred up uh, something in me to say that you can climb. I mean. It can be business, it can yeah. be... So I just took the lessons from that and so applied that to you can yes. be anything, anything, you, want anything be. you want to be. But to be that, you need to just yes. step out of the box and yes. do what you have to do. Yes. All right, so and you so do so there the, my... Uh, yeah, I, I'm like, you know what? Uh, and I think that's why they say entrepreneurs or business people are crazy because sometimes it's like on a whim. Yeah. You read this book and you're like, hey, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it's the answers. <laughs> Type yeah, your but, later. but no, 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 it wasn't like that. So I, I got fired up, but then I, I decided to, to draw up a plan. I knew that I wasn't going to be employed anymore. Right. Uh, this is not what I wanted to do. Uh, yes, I'm an accountant by training, but I am more of a creative. I want to do different things. I want to, to be innovative. I want to be allowed to do different things. Yeah. And so I, I realized that there was no, maybe there was no place for me uh, in the corporate um, Space or in the typical uh, career journey, yeah. and so not I decided. That you were not capable. If you did, you no, I was suddenly, capable. Yeah. Yes, but it's not what it was, was not going to bring me full yeah. fulfillment. Yeah, so I decided to start a company. All right. So I started this company in uh, 2014, June 2014, and uh, I I keep it on the side. I say, you know what, this is where we are heading. 
So uh, I give myself time. I, I start uh, conceptualizing what this would be about. Um, I really wanted to go out into uh, consulting and uh, training, uh, pri providing training solutions uh, to different companies and especially to, to accountants yeah. to give them some sort of, um, you know, molding. Apart from what we learn in school, yeah. how do you prepare yourself actually for the, the workplace, workplace, the practical work? Yes. Yeah. So that was the original uh, plan for Tuam Synergies, the company. And then uh, it took me about a year uh, thereafter uh, to resign. So, so you knew this is what I'm going to do, yes. but I had to have a plan. Yes. So you take a year planning while building the concept, yes. Tuam Synergies. Mm -hmm. So I'm building the concept, I'm building up my mental resilience yeah. uh, um, um, and even for me it was scary so I had to continue reassuring myself that this is what I want to do mm -hmm. this is what I need to do yeah. uh, in order to quench that um, that feeling so it took me about the other side, you, have, you have a dad who had always had it. Share, share with them the, the plan because you're saying your dad had this dream for you when you'd be a doctor <laughs> accounts so I was like okay if it's going to be accounts this and yeah. that you and mm -hmm. yeah so um, my dad always wanted me or oh, he he would he had brought me up to be you know like uh, he always told me how brilliant i am how i can do anything i want to do but he really wanted me to to go up the corporate ladder and he could see it he could you see it coming you know i had all the potential uh doing really well in school mm -hmm. good grades uh scca down in the bag by 27 Come mba on, down in the bag by 29 mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like you know what you're headed straight for the un right to the top <laughs> Right to the top, yeah. World Bank, you know, those kinds of things. So you and see job interviews, send them your Yeah, he would keep yeah. sending me, you know, all these emails, all these uh, job uh, opportunities. Offers, yeah. And, and uh, even like voluntary, you know, he's like, you can go and do this. And then you get yeah, into the add system, to your CV, add to your CV. Mm -hmm. Like he really had a plan. And he kept checking in on me uh, yeah. in intervals and, you know, uh, making well, sure I was still... According to the plan, until... you know, in this head of yours, <laughs> you are dreaming to uh, <laughs> sabotage the entire plan. Yeah, so you can imagine his shock when I told him that uh, I was quitting my job. Yeah. And uh, when he asked me to do what, I didn't really quite have a plan. Mm -hmm. I thought I had a plan because I knew I've started this company, I'm going to go out, I'm going to, you know, consult for different companies, yeah. um, provide solutions. In, your head, in my head, it was like it was yourself. making sense. Then when I tried to explain to people, <laughs> they ask you questions, they punch holes in that, yeah, you know? In your, in your yes. Mm. And, um, I, I sensed a lot of disappointment, um, but uh, again, the book had, you know, talked about you up. yeah, these things are going to happen. Yeah, you, you know, opposition. negative, negative Fights. feedback. Why, even if it's your family, yeah, okay, this is what, <laughs> this is what they were talking so about in the book. <laughs> so yes, I suited myself up, yeah. and um, I was ready to go. So age so, twenty nine, you quit. Yes. But you uh, had enough savings for... So in my last year, or when I decided that uh, this was the route I was going to take, I started um, uh, aggressively saving. Yeah. So I was saving about maybe 60% of my... 70% of my salary. Wow. Putting it aside. For and dream. For the dream. Uh, because I knew that uh, going out, uh, starting a business is not um, as easy. And from all the research I was doing, most of the challenges people had really were capital mm -hmm. and... At that time, I didn't know that there were bigger challenges than capital. So I was thinking, I need to finance this business, first of all, because no one in my family is going to give me capital. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but I also need to be able to keep on my feet. I don't well, want to start... To run to anyone yeah, saying, so uh, no, I don't have fuel, what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I did, um, I had to cut back on my spending, do some aggressive saving for about a year, yeah. and then I knew I was ready. I was right. ready to go out. Um, okay, so then uh, fast forward, you, you start the business, uh, yeah. you're, you're pitching to, to Bades. You, who was your target audience? Uh, who was the business for? Uh, the business was actually for small businesses. Yeah. Uh, SMEs. SMEs, yes, mm -hmm. uh, startups, mm -hmm. uh, even those that had been uh, there for a while may not be startup, but they've not professionalized their business. Yeah, yeah. So really to support them, to handhold them, uh, to make sure they can structure, you know, their finances, System their management, management systems mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So that was really uh, the business I was going into. 
All right. Yes. And so it starts to pick up. Uh, yes, it starts to pick up. You Along know, the way you've been at the beginning, gig. You, you call a few friends, you tell them this is what I'm doing now. So they hook you up with a few clients, friends here and there. Yeah. Uh, yes, along the way, I started, uh, I got a big break and went into international consulting. Mm -hmm. and, and, and things started looking up, and yeah. I was uh, getting excited. Yeah. And before we get into the big break, I mean, uh, what's, 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 what was the need for your business? Because because there's guys who are listening right now and and should have you know hired your consultancy because you're saying the questions you'd ask them you know uh, do you can I see your your books of accounts can I see what are some of those basics that you're just so, helping um, businesses with. In, so in my time as, as an auditor, yeah. we, of course, working for a big, a big four firm, yeah. uh, typically the kind of businesses we would audit are, you know, the likes of MTN, NSSF. That already have systems. That already and have structure. systems and yeah. structures. And when, we, when I would be out there talking to, you know, other people who are running businesses and who have run them even for a long time, you know, like my uncles, relatives, you realize that they have uh, really good businesses. They're making a lot of money, but they have no, they don't even have like a cash book. Or they keep the money in their personal accounts rather yeah. than a business account. Or they don't know how to, even just to write, you know, uh, appointment letters or job descriptions. Yeah. Things which seem obvious, obvious for a company, like but that. where Shall many uh, SMEs actually don't have these structures in yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. Even how you make, you know, how you make and prepare and pay a payroll, mm -hmm. you know, because people hire people and then they say, I'm going to pay you 300. And uh, you've never sat down as a business owner to, to calculate what are the taxes on, this, on exactly. this salary that you have to pay and things like that. So there were quite a number of businesses that needed the service. Yeah. I knew there was market, so the market for the market service. Yes, the market yeah. was broad. It's just how you break into it and how you convince people that they need the service. Because someone tells you, I've been doing this business for five years and I've managed quite fine. Why, why, do, why do I need to yes. start So being able to make people see why they need the service yeah. is yeah. where the trick was. Okay, so uh, we're moving a little uh, faster there. Maybe uh, how, how long is this? Maybe before you get your international break, one year, two years, and two years. Yeah, going solo? about a year. About okay. a year. Yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, so you get. Uh, tell me about that international break first of all. <laughs> so um, uh, friends would call me and say, yeah. "Oh, there's there's this gig." Uh, would you, do you want to go? Do you want to do this? Yeah. And then I would either say yes or I would say no. Uh, there were lots of you know, short-term consultancies uh, where they need maybe a finance person to step in for three, six months. Mm -hmm. And because I was free now, yeah. I could be able to do You're those kinds of, of gigs. Yeah. Yes. So uh, a friend calls me up and says, there's, there's a, a, a gig in, in Zambia. Are you interested? This is the kind of work. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm free. Yeah, Which month? Not. June. I say, let me check my calendar. <laughs> but in actual sense, yeah, calendar, tell. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, I I decided to, to to take this gig. Yeah, and we went out there. We did uh, the work for three weeks. It mm -hmm. was quite uh, eye opening and and really uh, the networks that I made, uh, the people I met, the friends that I met, I, I made there. Uh, the connections really opened up a, a broad uh, broad uh, range of. Um, yeah networks for the future work so that did, I did, did this uh, like uh, qualify you know your your need to move while you say yeah you see so uh well, were you able to say to the naysayers or, or maybe no, like your not dad yet. Who, who not, felt like really no not yet yeah it still wasn't anything to write home no, about no it was much. nothing to write home about but mm. it it gives you that sense of like i can There's actually hope. do this mm -hmm. there is hope there's yeah. hope yeah and um so i, I kept at it i kept yeah. at it and then um yeah, I, 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 one of those clients that I had or that I yeah, met. Because that's where I was going now. You, you <laughs> bump into a young man, uh, a dreamer. A like dreamer, yourself, yes. You know? no, they, they won't. Don't fall in love with a dreamer. Cause, eh, eh, you, you suffer. Know, you suffer. Yes. Every day the dream is changing. What? Eh? So you bump yeah. into this young man who has this concept uh, at the point, I think is called the medical concierge group, yes. and eh, which later on morphs into Rocket Health and all yes. of that. Yes. So tell me about that meeting, how you get involved to try and help these guys out? So, um, I, I, I get contacted uh, and, and uh, a lady says that um, I would like you to, to come and do some work for us at the medical concierge group. Uh, so I say, oh, what kind of work? So she explained to me and then she says, you have to come and meet uh, the, boss. the boss. So I go there and then 
it's Dr. Davis. So this Dr. Guy. Davis is not new to me because mm -hmm. I've been seeing him on TV. Uh, he used to sell uh, some products in my hall of residence at the university, some GNLD products. So, so he's not new to and me. And, always, yeah, and they are always the selling sell something. Things, uh, <laughs> and he had been a part of, uh, that was uh, Inspire, Inspire Africa. Africa. Yes, I'd seen him on, on the Manuela show. Manuela was selling juice yes. and he was, I mean, yeah, yeah just like that concept of uh, the concierge. Yeah. Group, yeah. Um, so, so, so I, I go and meet him and then he, he starts asking me, so yes, who are you? I mean, what, what do you do? What can you do, what for, can us? You do for us? This is the situation. This is the dream. Mm, he's interviewing you like a yeah, <laughs> Thing is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, uh, me, I can, I can professionalize you guys. Uh -huh. What? You start winning big gigs. Uh -huh. So um, the missing element. I'm the, mm. Yes, I'm the missing element in this thing. Silver bullet. To but then that. while we are, we are talking, and he's telling me all this work, and I, I, so I normally for my clients, what I would do is first to do uh, what you call like an, an audit, really just to understand the state yeah. of affairs. Assess them and. and uh, I, at the medical concierge group, mm. I assessed in like five minutes. You could see I this could one. See. <laughs> they lack at that one. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, we got into talks and um, uh, we, we agreed on the scope of work that was supposed to be done. Yeah. And uh, uh, this work was supposed to be done over a period of time. Um, so I, I started supporting but you were, them. You were certain these ones were not but, managed uh, to pay me. Wow. No, I, 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 was, uh, I was skeptical because... Um, I, I thought I, I I was like if I give my first of all if I give my true rate they'll chase me mm -hmm. but then you know when you're starting out as well you don't want to give you don't want to you be want expensive you want an entry mm -hmm. yeah but then even with my entry rate uh, yeah so uh, I was like okay we you know let's take it step by step yeah so we came to an agreement which was uh, became like a monthly payment yeah. so they could pay over time mm -hmm. uh, and so I started I started the work I I basically help them to to put some systems and structures in place yeah. uh before of course they were doing most of of these things themselves uh but they were not really documented um mm -hmm. uh there were some some gaps which i i had to support them to to be able to close yeah uh but also just bringing that uh, practical experience from uh, the finance side on how uh, structures are supposed to be put in place. And that doesn't necessarily mean uh, maybe a, a system or, but processes, yeah. you know, processes, yeah. documents and things like that. So along the way, mm -hmm. I, I, I was so intrigued by the vision yeah. and uh, that, that, that thing within me uh, you know, like kept, say, game, game identifies <laughs> uh -huh, game. Game yeah. identifies game. So, so, so I was like, I need to yeah, because <laughs> yeah. you said you saw in Davis the same thing you saw in yourself yes. when you were pulling out from your lucrative job yeah. and then trying to chase your dream and what. Yes. Yes. Uh, financially speaking, it didn't make sense, but yes. you could see this. I could fire see in this something, man. yes, and 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 I think what makes the difference between uh, some business people or some entrepreneurs is yeah. that the staying power. Yeah, and I could see that Davis had it in him, him and his team. Yeah, they had it in them to drive this this dream mm -hmm. and i could see i could see where they wanted to go yeah. and i wanted to go there with them mm. yes so then you made a decision yes <laughs> You are there to work, why, why? to be able to get some money, to, <laughs> to get support some money. Uh, uh, the company that you had begun, yes. well, which was growing. Uh, yes. by the, how many people do you now employ at Twam? Oh, uh, we now employ 11 people full-time. Wow. And we are planning to add and a And it's more. grown, it's had it's it's subsidiaries. Yes, it's, it has subsidiaries. Mm -hmm. we, we started out as Twam Synergies, and we now have Twam Financial Services. All right, you're into so, money lending, yes. uh, mobile banking, yes. blah, 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 blah. Story for another day. Yes. But here you are with the medical concierge group. Uh, you see the fire in Davis. You see the dream. Uh, it's checking a box for you. You want to change the world. Because this, yes. this is what he's selling, yes. right? Yes. Uh, you decide to do something. Yes. So I, I decide to be part of this story. Oh, I'm interested in being part of this story, not mm -hmm. just for six months, or, but for a lifetime. Yeah. So, so um, say, guys, you can't really pay me, but how about? <laughs> how about we come to an understanding? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because I, I, I love the business. We clicked uh, on the first go. Yeah. And, and we, we sort of had um, unwritten... I don't know what they call it. Like the road was unwritten, but we're all walking but the you same could road. See the road yeah. Yes. Mm. So um, I, I told them that I wanted to buy shares in the company, to join the company yeah. as a shareholders. And mm. then 
instead of them me of them paying me that my consultancy fees yeah. i had to pay to become a shareholder in oh, the business wow. yeah so uh obviously at the time uh, like i had mentioned i had saved up just for uh for one upkeep. year so i couldn't take my upkeep and now invest it in the business mm -hmm. but i said i can take a loan uh, i was willing to take a loan to put into this business so they let you know uh, you can join uh, to become a shareholder you, mm -hmm. you have to amounts, pay yeah so uh, much money to get so many shares mm -hmm. And so you decide to take a loan. Yes. And I, I, I was so fired up by this thing, but I didn't want to go to my family to ask for money. Yeah. <laughs> so thank God I was still part of the circle at my previous workplace. So I went and I requested for uh, a loan. And I had some savings there. Yeah. So I requested for a loan, which I agreed to pay over a period of a year. So that's what I want to ask you right there. You know, where do you get that knack? For to inv because that makes sense now. If I mean, just this week, uh, this company which took a loan to become a shareholder in has just you know uh, won a grant, five million dollars, and, and there's so many more grants coming. Uh, but at the time, I don't think you could see any of that. And this this is we're talking way back 2000 and what? This 18, is uh, 2016. 2016. 17, yeah. yeah, it's still really a baby. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you see, and what causes you not only to uh, work for them, but even go and borrow in your state, yeah? Witchcraft. Uh, uh, yeah, because that's what I want yeah. to know. Many of us miss those opportunities and say, ah, I wish I had known. I wish I had known, you know, yeah. I, I had a story of a guy who Coca-Cola was selling shares, and, and you know, it was just petty cash, and, and friends bought him and sold, and now when you look now, it's just, yeah. yeah. So what is it? I, I think it was... I don't know. It was the intensity of the dream. It was so big. Yeah. It was so exciting. So we're going to revolutionize. We are medicine. going to change Uganda. Mm. Going to revolution. When I would talk about, when I would, the first time I said the word telemedicine to my family. They said what? What? <laughs> hey, Chichi. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, like the dream was so scary, even yeah. to me who wanted to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And but then I felt like this is what I have been looking for. Yeah. Yes. The Something answers to some myself. of the questions that I had been asking myself. Yeah. Something bigger than myself. Yes. All right. So anyway, long story short, you become a shareholder. Yes. Now start to carry the dream together. Yes. Uh, so you're an accountant with four other doctors. Yes. Uh, and then you're growing. 2019. You yes. is that when you moved to Rocket Health, or you yes. still? Yes. So we, we are growing. We we raised some some funding, mm -hmm. and we are able to to now break uh, into the market as Rocket Health. All right. Uh, and what exactly is your service services. offering? What is Rocket Health doing at the time? So uh, Rocket Health right now is an end to end service for telemedicine. So people can call and consult a doctor twenty four seven mm -hmm. uh, through our call center. Uh, they can also be able to access uh, lab uh, services, yeah. uh, lab pickups. Uh, conveniently yeah, so wherever you are well, yes mm -hmm. and then uh, medicine pharmacy. delivery mm -hmm. yes from our pharmacy to a convenient location within uh, Kampala all right yeah so um, when we set out to to now um, bring the rocket health um, services uh, uh, in we we start doing that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's, 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 it's nice, it's good, people like the service, it's convenient, yeah. but it's not gaining as much traction as, uh, well, at that time, actually, we it were, looked big. It looked like, big, oh, but we didn't know how much bigger it could especially be. Especially when you compare to what's happening oh, now. Yeah, now. So you had like three doctors on call. Uh, we had about maybe three doctors every shift, yeah. uh, so they are different shifts. Um, and then we had uh, nurses and mm -hmm. uh, other doctors and specialists at the clinic. We have a clinic on Lumumba Avenue okay. uh, for those who need an actual physical consultation. And so we were doing that. And at the time, I think we were about uh, maybe 40 staff in total. Mm -hmm. And um, when 2020 came, by the time the pandemic came, I feel like we, we were ready, but then oh, we so were not thought. ready. <laughs> Yes, yeah. we thought we were ready, mm -hmm. uh, but then we were not ready. For example, how many calls were you taking an hour, or how many clients were you servicing an hour then? Uh, and then we're going to juxtapose that with what's happening with now. With what's happening yeah. now. So just to give you, um, so before we would have about three, three to four doctors on shift, mm -hmm. uh, on every shift, and now we have about eight to ten doctors on every shift. All right. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, in terms of total staff numbers, we've grown from about 40 to about 100 and, 160 67 currently Whoa. so more than
and in triple. Span of two years. Yes, in a span of two years. Mm -hmm. So whether it's the call center, whether it's the lab, the pharmacy, everything has just like sort of uh, blown up. Blown up. Yes. Yeah. So you're doing an average of how many deliveries an hour then okay. versus uh, now. I'm just trying to see how how, okay. how much it has scaled. So uh, for, for example, in terms of the pharmacy deliveries, we're mm -hmm. doing maybe an average of about 30 deliveries per day, an average of about 200 deliveries a day. Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. Anyway, so the business is growing. 2019, pandemic happens. Yes. And you had never imagined that you'd be as relevant. Uh, yeah. You were there for such a time as this, as like this. the scripture says. Yes, yeah? we were prepared. Uh, what did that do to you? How did you have to scale up? Because sometimes success can break you if you do not have yes. the framework the or the ability to, to, yes. to, to max out. So paint the picture of it was killed as seeing you advertising, <laughs> recruiting, looking for riders, buying bikes, border borders. Yeah, so, so, ah. so many things had to change, yeah. but basically the foundation remained the same. Yeah. Uh, so a few things about how we're delivering our services. Um, so before we did not have like an internal logistics system we're using self border. So when the pandemic came and border borders were not allowed to carry passengers, yeah. we had to now come up with our own internal logistics, you know, fleet. So I would call. Yes. Then you order a safe border. Yes. Bring my SA, <laughs> order another safe border. Go take back. me back. Yes. Then Jose announced and said, "There are four. Enough. Uh, no more border. No borders. more border borders carrying passengers. So." Uh, we had like some 12 hours there of confusion. What do we do? What do we do? Uh, so of course we had to quickly reorganize uh, in terms of how we could be able to deliver uh, these uh, services to our clients. Yeah. Uh, we actually started um, buying some bikes and uh, we gave people, you know, we started hiring people who could ride. Mm -hmm. And those who were there already before uh, were given like a week or two to train and learn how to ride. Wow. Thank God during that time there were no, you know, cars on the road because of the lockdown. Guys would so, have had so. the stories <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we, we, God has really been gracious to us. We didn't have any accidents yeah, or any fatalities. Yeah. Uh, but we also had to go as far as delivering some of the, some, doing some of the deliveries with our own cars. Mm -hmm. So because we are, we are medical workers, we yeah. had stickers. So uh, as, so, someone, picture this, someone wants a, a delivery of medication of 10,000. And you have to deliver that to, to him in Chira mm. using fuel of yeah. like, Yes, that but taking. that's what it took to be able to show people that this, this service is reliable works. and it yes. works. Yes. Wow. I know you had many challenges and I was honored to, I think, MC when you sell the concierge group, I think 2019 or something, mm -hmm. and you were trying to, to court insurance companies to come on board and, and they're like, ah, this tele what? what are you saying? Blah, blah, blah. Um, when the pandemic hit. Yes. You were not looking for them. They were looking for they you. They were looking for us. Tell us about that. Yeah. So um, we had been trying to sell this concept to different insurance partners for a while. Yeah. And we were lucky that uh, UAP was the first on board. It believed in the concept and it really started um, advertising for us and actually getting its, its clients uh, to use China, our service. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, and, and I think it's just that the, the other insurance companies really wanted to to have data on whether the service actually yes, works. works. Is so it reliable? From yes, yes. yes. Uh, but by the time the pandemic came, we were in talks with most of these uh, these players, and so it was it was easy for them to then finally close that loop. Yeah. Yes, and and sign up. But you said it all happened so fast because they signed up, and not only were they signing <laughs> up, immediately you were getting calls. calls yes. Calls. So of course, as soon as an insurance partner would sign up they would send an email to all their clients and say, we have now onboarded Rocket Health as our telemedicine partner. Please feel free, call this number 0800. And <laughs> then <laughs> the call center is on fire. So you had like at first on five fire. people on call center, you have to max that out <laughs> yes, to like 50. Yes, like 20, yeah. yeah, 20, 30 doctors at mm -hmm. any one time. And the lines are just going crazy. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, we did that. And currently we have about 13 insurance partners on board with us. Uh, who, whose clients can access our services at any time of the day. So, you know, I feel now I'm just start to bring this to a wrap. And, and, and you know, the, the reason why I had you here on the set is just to paint that picture, the journey of the young girl with a dream, gets unsatisfied, reads a book, uh, book tells her, you know what, you can be all you want to be. Yeah. And to do that, there is a price to pay, sacrifice. And uh, I read a book, which is called, you know, if you want to walk on water, step out of the boat. Yeah. And that's literally what you did. Yeah. Step out of the boat yeah. and walk on water. Uh, believe in something, land on this idea, 
against better judgment, even borrow to buy in, you know. And yeah. uh, I don't know if it's in the name, Rocket, uh, because now because it, it seems just to went be on a rocket, rocket thing, you know. <laughs> And, and, and I can see if uh, Satelli Spirit, but if you continue doing what you're doing and doing it right, this, this is suddenly going to go uh, places, you know. Um, and so I want you to be able, as we bring this to a wrap, to what's the lesson? What's, what's, what's the inspiration? And you're going to look into the camera and uh, share. And it's not so much for women because it's for everyone, yeah? Uh, I'm not, you're, you're not here as a woman entrepreneur. You're here as an entrepreneur, all right? So what are the lessons you've learned in this journey? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what, I, I'm sure you're still learning some of those, but what message do you want to give? What do you want to say to the person who is where you are saying, ah, there must be more, more than this. Life, yeah. I'm meant for more. How do I get out of my box and boom? Wow. Um, firstly, I think for me, the lesson is that you never have the answers from the start. When I had that question and that hunger um, to find my purpose, yeah. I didn't, it, it's not like I knew when I left my job that this is what I was going to do to bring me to, to where I want there's to go. No, map, no right? there's no map. Don't yeah? wait for the ducks to no. line up in a row. Yes. So uh, I think that, that the lesson really is to, to trust your gut or to trust your instinct and follow those whispers, yeah. the whispers within you. Yeah. Um, secondly, I think uh, perseverance, you need, you need staying power. Mm. Uh, if you're trying to follow a dream, it's not something that's going to come in one day or two days. Yeah. You really need to go after it with everything that you have every day, every night. Speaking of perseverance, it must have been low moments. Like there's yes. a time she advertised <laughs> this service, expected a hundred people to come to Tuam for training. Ordered the yeah, hotel. So, so so my first my yeah. first gig uh -huh. uh, under Tuam was to do a training for uh, fresh graduates and like new newly uh, career entrants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and we were going to do a training on you know some basic office skills or yeah. career skills yeah. to, prepare you for, to prepare you yes for for, for your career mm -hmm. you know being different from other people so i organized this thing and you know go to a hotel and ad advertise put brochures send them out and invited people and i was so confident that you know this was going to if work I get this number of people if i get yeah if i get 50 people what they'll pay this i'll be able to pay off the hotel i'll pay this break, uh, even. break even and on the fit on that day <laughs> <laughs> Clearly it became I don't, I don't call it <laughs> Yeah. Only five of my friends. Oh wow. Five. Like no none of the like no participants outside. Came knew you. <laughs> Only yeah, the and some of them it was a sympathy vote of wow, Yeah, yeah they were like, well, well, let's go and support yes. Fiona. Mm. And I'm glad that uh I'm still friends with those people. Yeah. I'll always remember them for believing in me. And you had the hotel telling and you, even if you come, you have to pay the balance. <laughs> That's what that you is. say perseverance because yes, there are those low moments. Yes, yeah. there, there are moments when all the doors are shut. Yeah, but um, if this is really what you want to do and you're convinced that it's what you want to do, you have to keep going. Yeah, you have to wait. I, find I'm a way sure to keep on, going. on the rocket house side of things, I mean, in the search for equity partners, you yes. You were in so many dragons dens. You went to Dubai, Nairobi, uh, the yes, US. Yes, the US, sometimes everywhere. Sometimes doors are closed. So many closed doors. You can't imagine how yeah. many uh, people closed doors on us and how many times we have uh, tried and gone out again and, and quoted these people, mm -hmm. uh, different investors, and and we, we just were not breaking through. Yeah. But um, it helps that at Rocket Health we... We, we are a team uh, of five, um, and we've really been uh, helping each other up when, yeah. it, when we are low or when, yeah. when it's dark on those when dark days. Up, I yes. guess one of you one of, Yeah, together. and one of us is just like, no, we have to try another door. We have yeah. to try another door until yeah. we came to find uh, these partners. Wow. Yes. Would, you, would you say um, uh, being a part of something larger, uh, than yourself because a lot of the businesses people well would do you know you you think about me my hair buy a big car a big house yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and I'm sure those are going to come uh, along the way if they haven't already um, <laughs> is there inspiration from being part of something larger than you something that is that's probably going to leave a legacy like you said telemedicine just changing, changing the, the way world, yeah. medicine and yeah. you know all of this happens is that is there any inspiration from that? Or? Yes. Uh, I think being part of something that's bigger than yourself, 
making you know that it will live on even when you are not there it yeah. is not dependent on you yeah. it is not um it is not sitting on your shoulders you know that you will forever be etched into that story and whether you are there or not the story will live on i think it was a really big part of my motivation for joining uh, the rocket health team wow fiona it's been a pleasure i'm going to let you say your goodbyes uh, you haven't prepared for this, but maybe there's one last message, uh, especially to the young lady out there. Now I want you to talk to the ladies, yeah? Um, uh, I don't know if in this journey you've had any specific challenges that you've experienced because of your gender. Uh, and if so, what do you want to say to, to the young lady out there? Women, uh, as, as children, as girls, we, we are taught to avoid risk and to avoid, um, you know, to really follow the straight path. Um, but there is a place, there is a place for us uh, in the business world. There is a place for us to follow our purpose and our passion. And I'd like to just encourage every woman out there, whether in your job or in your business, there is nothing that is impossible uh, if you put your mind to it. Awesome. Thank you. And that's about all we had for Vine Talks today. Make sure you share this video as much as you can and push it out for all the young ladies, young gentlemen, and every budding entrepreneur to be able to watch and be inspired. God bless you. Be fruitful.